What I want to do now, as I said in, in, in this part of the program, is to really get in to talk about some of the nuts and bolts. Um, we've mentioned this word apologetics, JT, <laughs> on two or three occasions. Um, there are a lot of people sitting out there saying, what on earth are they talking about? I don't need apologetics. I just need to believe in Jesus. OK, so what are they? Do we need them? Should we all be involved in them? Take us away. OK, uh, the, the word apologetics doesn't actually come from uh, the word that we talk about when we say apologize. It, it, it comes from a Greek word. The Greek word is apologia, uh, which I'm sure means Greek to most people. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, there's a verse in the Bible, 1 Peter 3, verse 15, and it says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone to asks you, to, who asks you for the hope that you have. And the word answer is apologia. Right. So apologetics is is uh, answering. How do you know there's God? Apologetics is answering. Well, how can I find forgiveness? How, how can I find? Uh, and what about these people who say this? What about the Da Vinci Code? What about those? What about that? Is there a God? You know, yeah. uh, apologetics is just a, a long word, um, which means giving answers. Right. Um, as far as whether we should or not, Man alive, you're doing it already. Everybody who is a Christian, or even just people who believe in God, are engaging at some level, at some time, with some people where they are answering objections. Even if it's in the classroom, when a lad came up to me when I was 15 or 14, and he said, is God everywhere, Tankok? And I said, yes, he's everywhere. Is he in this cup, Tankok? I said, yes, he is. And he put his hand over the cup and he said, I've got him. Yeah. Now, apologetics <laughs> is what I do after that. <laughs> and what do you do after that, JT? <laughs> well, I, 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 I um, obviously I knew the lad, he was in my yeah. class, so I, I, I could have a few conversations with him. He was making a point to try yeah. and make me look small, yeah. but of course that's just one moment in one classroom. We had uh, five years together, so mm. um, he didn't become a Christian. But I think he got to a place where he, you know, he realised it wasn't knew, just as easy as well, yeah, that. Yeah, he knew what you were talking yeah. about. Um, that, that verse 1 Peter 3.15 uh, that you talked about there um, actually says always being ready mm. to give an answer. Um, now, I am sure many of our listeners have, have, have had that problem where they're talking with somebody, they've just met them on the train, on the bus, whatever, they start mm -hmm. talking about Christianity or whatever, you know, when it comes up. And they get asked a question that honestly they've never thought of, they don't know the answer to. What do they do? Well, I, I, do you know, there's, at one level, you could simply say, if, if you're in a conversation and someone is asking a question like that, you could say, well, I don't know all the answers. Uh, I probably can find an answer. So take their phone number or email yeah. address or whatever. Yeah. But, but then... It's it's the next the next thing you really should say is something like, um, but what I can be certain of I haven't I haven't tied up all the loose ends yet. But what I can be certain of is that not only is there a God, but that God uh, has made Himself known through Jesus. And when we look at Jesus, we see what God is like, mm -hmm. and uh, He's changed my life. Right. And that that's sim that that's that's one level of apologetics, and. Uh, having specific answers for specific questions is, is all part of that. But let's make sure that we do respond in some way. And let's not be afraid to say that we don't know all the answers, mm -hmm. because I know you've billed me as a guy with all the answers. <laughs> I have not got all the answers. Viewers, please, you know, I haven't got the, all the answers. <laughs> You're ruining my credibility here, John, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, we, yeah. We, we, we do need to be ready. And even if it's purely at the level of well, you know, I'm not. Some people aren't good uh, with framing words and sentences. But how powerful is it when you can say to someone, as some of the youth in the group, the youth group I lead back home, w will say, "Well, look, I I'm not clever with all those answers, type things. All I know mm -hmm. is that before I came to know Jesus and started following Him, my life was a mess, mm -hmm. and uh, I I'm not perfect now. But I, I know I'm forgiven. I know Jesus loves me, and." Mm -hmm. That's very powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. You've obviously, um, you know, quite a few years on in, 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 in your Christian life. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Just be careful now, yeah. Doug. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I would not dream of telling people you're 95. <laughs> they wouldn't believe me. But you're quite a bit. But 
here is this new Christian. Yes. Now, b because of where they live, or because maybe of their lifestyle or who they are, may mm. maybe uh, an illness or something, they might not be able to get involved in, in, in a church, or they might not be able to get involved in a church that really would teach them mm. these things. Now, hopefully they can, and obviously um, for most of us, or many of us, we really do want to be involved with a church that's a regular, ongoing teaching program. Mm. But where they can't, or where there isn't, or for whatever reason, what should new Christians begin to do? So here, they've heard about Jesus, I mean, like me, I mean, when I, um, I, I got to 16, I had never been to church, I had never heard about Jesus, well, not true, I'd heard the name a few times, been into church twice in those years, both for weddings, I'd walked out, to, out of Sunday school when I was five. Yeah. Um, the first time I really heard the gospel, I said, whoa, if this is true, I'm missing out, and with an honest heart, I prayed. Now, mm. here was our day one, um, no, no biblical background, <laughs> nothing whatsoever, people like that. What am I supposed to do? Mm. Um, they've got to read the Bible. Yeah. Uh, but the Bible is not a book. That's the mistake people make. The Bible is not a book. The Bible is a library of books. And you, you, you have to start in the right place. And to start at Genesis and work through to Reve Revelation will mean that you get bogged down somewhere about the fourth book along. Yeah. Um, read a gospel. Read Luke. Because Luke, he, he states quite clearly that he w puts things in order. He's looked at what some of the other people have said. Read Luke, then read Acts. So it's a case of getting into the Bible yourself. On the issue of church, Doug, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer that um, being part of God's community mm -hmm. is integral to being yeah, a Christian. Yeah. So if, if there is anybody listening or viewing that is in that position, contact me. I'll find them a Christian that will get to yeah. see them every week, even if yeah. they can't get out. Yeah. I will find I mean, that, that's it, isn't it? Because there are some, uh, that it's not that they don't want to, is mm. they can't. That's but, right. but the thing which you're saying there, of course, is that we need... Uh, that you know that, that we need they need to be put in touch with somebody who will come to them and so church where two or three yeah. are that they can have that fellowship yeah. they can have that communication so they're not just alone mm. and by themselves and of course study um, I, I'm sure we all find this is much better with two I mean you can study yourself but to bounce things off of yeah, each absolutely. other is, 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 is great isn't it and and the the internet is a great place uh, but it is like a library, and there's rubbish. There's, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot yeah. of rubbish. So you probably need need if if you can get hold of someone. I'm sure Doug, you'd give them advice if they contacted you. Yeah, we we can. Point you in the right Certainly. direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and there is there's there's a lot of good side. And of course, uh, also on uh, we should say on Genesis TV, there are some great. I mean, Chuck Missler that's coming after us uh, today a great Bible teacher, he, 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 he will spin some yarn sometimes, but he will always say, go and check me out. Don't believe what I say, believe what the That's Bible right. says. And, but some great teaching, he goes through book by book. Uh, and I know on Friday nights uh, uh, on, on Genesis as well, there's, uh, there's teaching. So yeah, so you can get it on, Revel uh, on Genesis, you can get it on Revelation, especially on Genesis, but also uh, it's great to have that, uh, that, that fellowship together.